one and all, my name is Tavis and today we're doing something a bit different. What you might wonder, we are building a little diorama. Now, you've seen before, I built the little quickie house and uh, I talked about that and I was going to 3D print some interiors and well, we have 3D print some interiors. I know it's a bit hard to see here because we are running on a sort of, I wish I say 6mm scale really, it's more close to 10mm scale but you know close enough and uh, today we're basically going to go through what it takes to build one of these things and um, yeah uh, these models comes from uh, cyberforge the cyberforge uh, 3d print we have some office cubicles we have a door we have some data banks and we have some other bits and grubbins like a desk and a chair and some a pair of characters, per humans. So yeah, that is pretty much a going to simulate a small office setup. Because well, you know, an office it's a thing. And we're using plastic hard as the frame. And uh, we're using some square rods for um, pillars so that's pretty much gonna be the entirety of it that's a big that's, that's the size of it the entire size of it I was considered making bigger for to make some room for outside designs but you know it's what it is so step one when you're working with plastics of so just scuff them up a bit because these are very shiny on one side and not very conductive to having paint sticking to them so just give them a quick scuffing to make sure that the surface it, it, it's rough roughed up and just using regular sandpaper here because it's not it's not a deep scrub just just a very tops level scrub just making sure that it's not you know glossy anymore because if you have a glossy the paint won't stick and that's annoying Technically, you don't need to do both sides for these because this is sort of plastic card. This is a one millimeter, mil, one millimeter plastic card. It has a textured side on one side and a shiny one on the other one. But yeah, we're going to start off by building the front, so to speak, where the door goes. And we have this tiny, tiny, if I've printed correctly, technically revolving door, but it, it didn't print correctly, so it's non revolving. So start by marking out how wide it is, and then we're gonna make it a little bit of a mess. Making sure that we have the right width of it. Which of course you never do. You do this and then you have to go in and actually um, I should put it. You have to go in and actually trim it afterwards. Anyway, because you always it's this you always do this measure twice cut once but in this case you instead cut a bit short and you trim it down to the right size it's a taste thing which one used to which one you want to use is what I'm gonna say it is a taste thing but yeah so basically we mark out the door and uh, all the prints here are printed on an old Elego Elego Pro Elego Mars Pro it's not a high res printer by any stretch of the imagination. And um, I hoped one day we would pick up a Saturn II, but for now, this will have to do. Meaning that some of the details are lost. These are very, very small, minute models, not designed in this scale. They are designed in 28mm scale. Meaning that when they get this compressed, a lot of detail gets lost. But you can see the door doesn't fit. So we go in and snippy snippy cutty cutty, taking out some of the door frame, making sure that it fits properly. Now, as I mentioned before, I do this because it's hard to find good terrain in this scale, especially sci fi ones. There's a lot of Bavarian villages, but not all that much sci fi in this scale. It's either smaller, 
or larger. And if you wonder what you would use this for, I would suggest Alpha Strike. Because if you're using the Hex mat, the Hex on the mat is tiny, minuscule. I think this is supposed to be like it's 30 meters across, which means you should be able to lay a mech down twice inside that square. So you can't do that. If you're going to. Uh, this is scale, so it's scale at all. But Alpha Strike, I think it works because it's a bit more free, a bit less thingy. It looks better. I don't know why they did this. I mean, I know why they did it. But at the same time, I'm not entirely sure why they did it. They should have stuck to one scale. But no, no, no. They have a game with a mix, mix two kinds of scale. Fantastic. But yeah. And they already nerfed range on things to make it playable. So, it, but yes. The map scale and the model scale are not in scale at all. So this is more for like skirmishing. Which is my favorite type of game anyway, so it is the better word. But yeah, basically we shrunk these models down and printed them. And at least half of them came out the way they should. Half of them did not. Again, this is a matter for me dialing things in, but the very little mar marginals when you're working like this. Uh, yeah, but it's not much more to say about that. We're just super gluing things in because it's resin and uh, plastic art, you can't plastic weld that because there's nothing to plastic weld it with. I think I guess you could. But there's these are so, so thin that it's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. So I was thinking about adding windows to it, but I like this sort of neutral private no nonsense office building. It's like it has no no sense of flair at all. It's just it's just an office cube. Now on to building the walls, and we are going to be using these square tubes and um, using them as uh, pillars, basically wall pillars. And I like doing it this way because it mimics in a way real world building because you can just line them up at the edges and just use them as attachment the points to other walls. You could also, if you have a thicker card, just glue the cards together, but this way you have a bit extra meat so to speak and we're using super glue accelerator to set it quick set because otherwise it would never set it's not perfect but it's close enough so we just do the rest of the walls like this and we now have three walls and a floor always this is a good time to make sure you should done this earlier but this is a good time to make sure that you're walls still fit the floor. If it is, doesn't, this is a good time to start cutting things, make sure they do fit. But this, mm, perfect fit. Looks really good, actually. You could just flip that way around and use this as a floor. As a roof, I mean, not a floor. And, but I want to be able to see inside the building. So we take our fourth wall and we try to not break it. Yeah, I know. Sorry. And uh, we're basically going to do the same thing here by attaching a pair of square stock and then sticking the wall onto that. And then, of course, comes gluing the whole thing to the base plate because the walls are set. And as you can see, we use the pillars to attach the front wall the same way we did the back wall. And we apply a liberal amount of super glue and accelerator to that plate and then we just slap it on. You have to be a bit careful, since you use accelerator, you don't have a wiggle room at all. It's going to set almost immediately. But yeah, it's good. It's not perfect, because, well, I could use a lot of excuses, but basically I'm not that good yet. So, we're not going to start gluing in things. And the things in this case are a little barrier that I set up in front of the door. Which is like how most official building has these days. Make sure people don't gate crash them. So a big concrete barrier in front of the door, and then we take out one of the tiny, tiny, tiny little human beings. I mean, this is I'm trying to show it off how tiny it is, but that is a security guard with a gun. If you couldn't tell, it printed. It has details, 
I give my printer that it has details. You just can't see them because it's too tiny. But yeah, we put him in front of the door. Or well, right next to the door. Because I think an office like this will probably have a guard in this universe. Because, well. I don't know, maybe it's a small bonds office or something. I don't know. Or it's really the office for mer mercenary contracts or something. I don't know. <laughs> and now we're going to try to put the next guy in there. So the one of the office guys. And what I do is I just basically put a bit of accelerant on the cutting mat and then I paint it on where I want this guy to sit because you don't want to spray it. And oh, so delicately put him in place. So, ta da! We now have people in cubicles. Cubicles are glued down that we can paint the floor first. But, well, things are sort of going where they're supposed to be going. Now, paint wise, here we'll be using some contrast paint. Why? Well, basically, it goes on easy. It is fairly pigmented, but it does, doesn't make a thick layer of it. Because I just want this to be like worn, ugly old carpet that wants to lay down in the entire place. And that's it's just been there since forever, so just a quick slap down of contrast paint. It works fairly well. Now, when you do this, make sure that you go with the brush and make sure all the brush strokes are more or less the same direction to give it a more uniform look. Uh, and yeah, you see here even out all the all the spots. That's on the painting the walls, and we're using a plain grey because it's an office. If it's not soul crushing it's not an office. So basically you're slapping on a nice coat of grey, warm grey. It's relaxing you see. It is really not. I should paint in green. Minty green. That's relaxing apparently. I don't I don't think so, but people think so. Yeah, pale grey, just smoothing out the walls. I'm gonna do all the four walls, but you just can't much paint one because, again, repetition is not that fun. And I'm pretty sure you can paint. You, 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 my dear viewers, know how to paint a flat surface in a single color. There's no mystery here. It's just it's playing a single coat or two coats if you think it looks a bit too patchy. But say this office is supposed to look ratty, so in my case, it doesn't really matter if it looks a bit patchy. So, yeah. and then we go in and glue in the little cubicles. And I start off with one because one is gonna be the set there, the tone setter for the rest of them. We carefully place that one. We are not using accelerant here because you want to actually have a bit of time to move them around. Also I'm pretty sure the accelerant would reactivate the contrast paint. So yeah, I have mocked up this a few times before I did this just to make sure that I had an idea of how I wanted to place them. I'm sorry I can't get a better camera view of this. But my fingers are a tad bit too big in the building is a tad bit too small but trust me they just plop down there's so much more to it now one thing you want to make sure when you do this is of course that you are have dry fitted ahead of time because once you super glue things in, it's gonna stick fairly quickly thanks to well everything, and it's hard to pull it off again. So make sure you think these things through. I wanted the office landscape to be like semi open, in that it has these little things. I mean, doesn't that look lovely? little office landscape we put in a server rack also put in the the manager's table up the corner uh, because of course the manager can be sitting there overlooking everything and that's, that's some more gravel just to fill out the space a bit I was considering some plants too but I didn't find the plants were small enough so they had to go without plants again makes sense for sort of dreary office Uh, 
Uh, you can't see it in here, but the basis of most of these things I'm bringing now is a bit uneven because a few supports let go and it didn't print fully the way it should. Um, but yeah, for all intents and purposes, it's starting to look like something. And we quickly go move on to painting the outside because it needs to be done too. And I mean, again, I'm sure you know how to paint a flat surface, so we're not going to stay too much on this. Just make sure to paint it in some other drab, dreary color because it's needed. Again, we smooth out the brush strokes, make sure it looks fairly even. Now, in painting the interior, we start off with some ever so gentle black on the guard because, well, this is a guard. Not much more to say about that. We're using contrast paints for this because it's tiny, tiny models and there are not a lot of details and you want whatever little detail we can to come out. Contrast paints are great in this case. They flow easily, they cover nicely and they have a lot of pigmentation. So that's perfect. Um, this guy well, is supposed to look like a regular office guy. He has a brown trench coat, pair of grey pants. A fairly average person, nothing special. Um, it's because we also painted the uh, trash can green, uh, not the trash can, the dumpster green because, well, it's it's a fun thing. Now, as you can see, this is pretty much as big as it's going to get. You could continue to build this up also if you want. Just build the elevator somewhere and just have it continue up. That's the fun part with these. They're tiny. You, they're pocket-sized environments. I mean, technically, you could print a lot of mini, mini, miniatures too to play in this environment. If you're very, very, I would say, if you're very ambitious. I'm not that ambitious, but you could if you wanted to. As we're going coming to the end of this now, again, this is part of a few test builds I'm doing. The idea is to be able to provide and interior kits for you people out there who want to build your own. I can't share these because these are not mine, but the goal is to make interior kits that you can print either as an entire unit or as components and build your own, build and paint your own terrain. But this one is still coming up later. We are not there yet. We are still working on figuring that out. Am I not entirely sure if there is even a actual demand for this? I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna spend some time doing this anyway. So yeah, trying to build terrain designed for this scale, which means it's less but also more pronounced details so that they actually can do things with it. And uh, we're trying to make people also for this scale, which means reducing the details quite a bit. Just keeping the and also messing a bit with proportions, making heads slightly bigger, hands and feet slightly bigger, just to make sure that you get everything in there you need. Now, a part of me wish I could show you the end result of this, because that was great, because I really had a really nice shot lined up, but fortunately my camera ate that. So, we're gonna end fairly abruptly soon. Not now, but soon. And, um, now, as always, I hate to ask this, but if you have the time and inclination, do subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like. I know it's tacky to beg for these sort of things, but the algorithm is what it is. We need engagement, and without engagement, we haven't much reach. And I do want to reach. I do want people to reach out to all of you. But anyway, as we wrap things up here, this has been a nice little test build. It is about a decimeter squared, about 10 centimeters squared, this entire building, making it surprisingly pocket sized. And I say it would be fun to be able to provide a more, a more um, versatile kit, like having a few different interiors. Maybe with some things you can print, 
but the problem is that the walls seem so thin that it's hard to print the walls. You probably always have to provide your walls yourself. But I mean, cardstock will do, plastic card will do, and yeah. we're gonna try to build a mech lab also. We're definitely gonna build a mech lab for this. You can build your little staging area. But yeah. I'm now having a vacation, which means that we will have videos coming out very regular. Um, so keep an eye on the channel. And um, yeah, this is it. The final reveal, if you want, if you like. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, and do, do play fair. Bye.